Hi, I'm Victor and I'm very excited to show you this. This is uh, a node I created, a node that uh, automatically uh, places dimensions from each column to the closest grid line. So, um, let me show you what it does first. I'm going to use it by the Dynamo player. This is the script. I'm going to just uh, press run without doing anything. And I get the dimensions. And you can see the dimensions are placed correctly to the closest grid line. And if a column lies on the intersection of two grid lines, no dimensions are placed. If it lies as this one here, on one of the grid lines, we have only one dimension. So we don't have zero dimensions, which was a problem in the previous version of the script. And if we change the position of a column later, so now it is actually closer to this, we can just run it again. And it is going to update. And what are the settings right now? We are just taking all uh, columns in the project right now, but I'm going to show you how to select only certain columns. And here I have these secondary grids that we might want to exclude. We might want um, the columns to be measured only relatively to the main grids. So if I just type in the name of the secondary grid here, we're going to exclude it. So now you can see these are measured to the main grid. And if I remove this, of course, we are, we are getting the dimension to the closest grid line. And if you want to also exclude this, uh, this, we just uh, type both of them with a comma in between, like this, and we can see that now the script ignores them. Actually, I, I'm going to ignore this one as well. E. So yeah, but uh, actually, there was no point of ignoring this one since uh, none of them is. It is not the closest one to any of the columns. If I ignore the D uh, grid line, it's going to be another thing. So now. If it is ignored, of course, C is the closest horizontal grid line to this. And I, I can, of course, remove all this here. Run again. I can change the type. Blue dimension. Red is just a type name. My dimensions here. So let's go to Dynamo and see what's happening inside. Most of the work is done by a big uh, Python uh, node. And I wanted to make a blog post about uh, create about achieving the same result only with uh, Dynamo nodes, but I don't think it's currently possible. Maybe there is a node in some of the packages uh, and I don't know about it that creates dimensions, but as far as I know, it's not possible to do this only with uh, out-of-the-box nodes. At least not now, in uh, February 2018. So this is a custom node with these three inputs. I'm going to close Dynamo Player. So I'm getting all the categories here, all elements of category the name this string uh, and the name of the dimension type and these are the grid lines I want to exclude 
this is just uh, if I type them here with a comma it's going to create a list so if I type here b2 comma 1 with like this and I hit play I pressed F5 we are now ignoring these two and this is just a list of two strings it is going to be exactly the same thing if I have two strings here and I make a list of them like this F5 to run exactly the same thing so this input is uh, expecting a string or a list of strings and there are actually uh, some more options inside the node so if you go and edit the node I have more inputs that are hidden right now these two are um, an option to offset the dimension so it's somewhere and this is update or create new which is a boolean value so now it's set to true so that means that if I change the position of the column and run it again it's going to delete the old dimensions and create new but yeah if you want to use these inputs how do you do it you just search for input and you can connect it so this is now going to be uh, sorry I don't have to re remember that I just have to type in like uh, unit value double and another input which is going to be distance from columns and it's also going to be a double this is optional you might not declare the type of it but it's always better if you do and update create new another input boo so now if I save this we get these additional inputs here so if we want to use the offset we have to declare the unit value yes uh, here it's not declared correctly why because uh, the names have to be a single piece of uh, string so now it's okay and because Revit internally is running in feet and my project is in millimeters the unit value must be something like this I guess point eight just going to copy this and 
And now if I want a distance from columns, I'm just going to put an, a random number here. Yes, and, but we need an input now. So boo, boolean, I'm going to put it to true. And now we have this offset. And this is something that I doubt uh, a lot of people are going to use, so that's why it is hidden by default. And if I set this to false, if I run this again, now we're going to add new dimensions, but we're not going to delete this. So that's basically it. I'm going to undo the last couple of changes since I don't like it. And also, I'm going to undo here in Dynamo. And I'm going to leave only the inputs that I need. Like this. I don't need this anymore. And I'm going to save the node again. So, what else? Uh, how does it work? It divides uh, the grids into groups. This, uh, which names uh, start with a number, and the others, which names start with a letter. So, that means that even if I have a slanted um, grid line like this it's going to create dimensions and what else um, the way it uh, remembers um, the ideas of the dimensions is actually interesting so this is my project here. Uh, this test house dot rvt, and when you run that node, it actually creates a text file with the same name as your project name and the IDs of uh, the dimensions in the folder where your project is located so if I, I can delete now this and that's going to make dynamo forget these dimensions so they're not going to update but new ones are going to be created that means that each project in this folder has a text file which with uh, the ids of the dimensions used there so if I open, I'm going to first close Dynamo. And if I open the other project, and run the script, Maybe change the locations of the columns to see that it works. It remembers them. Then if I go back to the other file, change Uh, if you find this annoying that you double click and you enter edit family, you can actually switch it off from the options. This is just a bonus tip. Double click options. Family, do nothing. I prefer it that way actually. So now if I change it like this and run it again.
the dimensions are deleted and new ones are created here which is really fine I think and there are of course other ways of using it instead of uh, selecting all, all the columns I, I can I'm going to delete for the dimensions I'm going to close Dynam player and I can search for select elements and I want to select these columns only I'm going to connect it here and now we have dimensions for these columns only and right now we are ignoring the the additional B2 grid line. If I just remove it and I don't have an input here, we're not ignoring anything. As you are, as you've already seen. And if we go here and we delete this file, then uh, Diamond is not going to remember them, so it's going to create new dimensions. You might have seen a little text uh, here showing don't run the note in automatic mode and the reason is if you do this the script is going to create an infinite loop so dynamo is going to crash it's it's not nice so just make sure that you run the note in manual mode only and that's it from me guys uh, if you like the video uh, you can press on like and you can subscribe if you didn't like it if it was too long you can press on dislike just so i know and you can find that note in the download section of my w w website revitexperiments.com it's not going to be for free, there's going to be just a small fee. I, I advise you to read the blog post with some further explanations, if these 17, 18 minutes were not enough. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.